What's up guys, welcome back to another video, hope you're doing well today, and I'm not sure if it's just me, but I feel like a lot of people can agree that recently the overall quality of just tracks that have been released has gone through the roof, and that's not even from like well-known reputable track creators, I think even a lot of first releases these days are just getting better and better, and I think that all comes just from the sharing of knowledge amongst track creators in general and the sharing of assets to use. Uh, this is a track created by Mouse and it's called Poor Boys MX. Now this consists of three tracks in total. Uh, we've got a, oh actually is this a, oh no it's part of the trial course, never mind, freestyle trial, whichever you want to refer to it as. So we've got a main motocross track here that goes straight through the middle of the area. Now, over in the back corner we've got a pit bike track. Now he says pit bike track uh, but also mentions it's a more so meant to represent like a kid's track in real life that's just been really broken down over time. So I'm actually quite excited to try this. We don't get too many tracks that are suitable for pit bikes these days. And then all the way around the outside, you know, we've got a road part of here. It kind of disappears, snakes off into the uh, in the trees. Uh, there's a little trail area that kind of snakes around the back and uh, it's kind of all hidden at the moment but i'm sure we'll be able to explore that further as we go in terms of overall appearance appearance as well for a first track it's it's quite pretty uh, very impressive that he's gone out of his way to make like fields and we've got a little free ride area uh, more like kind of crops dotted around there and just really impressive stuff for a first release so in typical fashion we're going to go through the tracks one by one and i'm going to give my thoughts on it and i hope you enjoy it if you've been putting off buying that new MX gear or you're just looking for some new daily MX related clothing, then head on over to fxrracing.com. Code MXPR underscore Linz15 at checkout will give you 15% off all motocross and lifestyle products. This code is applicable to the European, Swedish and Norwegian websites and not Canada or the USA. And whilst I've got your attention, you may as well subscribe to the channel. It's just one click of a button and it puts a big old smile on my face. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. He's even been nice enough to uh, give us some directions as well. So the motocross track is straight in front of me. Uh, we've then got trails that kind of follow the road this way. We've got a kids track over there as well. And I notice if I go the wrong way too, because you guys know that I'm really bad for going the right direction on the track, it even says wrong way. So he's uh, he's thought of the people like me who clearly don't have eyes. And let's, let's see how this goes. So in, in flying around the track beforehand, it doesn't look like it's the track that would work too amazingly with a 450 like the jumps look fairly small so i'm gonna have to mentally tell myself to check up quite a bit i think over some of these jumps i could have just gone the easy route and rode a 250 but i feel like if i stay on the 450 there's a chance i could find some very weird and wonderful lines and i hope you all agree as well that the setup at the moment kits wise looking very very litty uh, so massive shout out to Mr. BP who's been supplying me with some gear recently. This is the 2024 FXR collection. Let's hook around to the right here. Oh, that was nice. Get a little double. I like the ruts that we've got on the jump faces too. Adds a little bit more character to the jumps. This was a smaller one. I think kind of discovering and learning these tracks might be a little bit more difficult today because again I've uh, for those of you that are unaware, the reason why I've not been running Max HUD these days is that's definitely trippable. That is because at the EU round of Unadilla, for Ariel, I had another game crash, which it's a little bit of a pain in the bum because nobody knows the, the real reason for it at the moment. We've been getting a lot of game crashes. I know that I think it was in EU that there was... No, Washougal, sorry. There was nine game crashes. So having nine people out of 30s games crashing is just not really acceptable. So I'm trying to do whatever I can to reduce that risk. So for the NA race, I remove Max HUD, I remove Reshade, and just run the game kind of raw, and had no game crashes at all. So all I'm doing at the moment, also love the, uh, the stake that's laying down there, looks as if it's been knocked down, which again, another nice little attention to detail. Uh, I'm... I'm just going to keep running it this way and see if it carries on. If I have any more game crashes, even without them, then I'll just slap them back on because it doesn't really make a difference anymore, if that's the case. But yeah, I'm going to try and... The issue, the issue is, when there's money on the line for things like in these championships, like Ariel, I, I believe uh, the winner gets like $500 or something like that crazy. Uh, it gets a little bit more stressful. Usually I wouldn't mind so much, but yeah, when there's money on the line, you don't really want to be having game crashes all the time. So I hope you understand, as it's probably the, the question that I'm being asked the most these days. Uh, well, one thing that I do want to mention as well is... Um, so, I got a little bit disheartened yesterday. I can't lie. Um, I know that, obviously, oh, you guys are not obligated to uh, watch every single video that I post. That is, uh, you, you watch what you want to watch and, and that's it. And I just keep posting uh, most days and see what kind of clicks and what works. 
Um, yesterday's video, which I believe is the free-for-all video, did not do very well whatsoever. And I, I can't admit, I, I have to admit, I was a little bit of a, uh, a grumpy boy for that day. Because I, I stayed up until about 4.30am editing and putting that together. It took me a very, very long time. And to see it kind of do really, really poorly, probably worse than like 90% of my videos do after spending that much time and effort on it, was a little bit sad. So I want to get a little bit of uh, kind of like constructive criticism or feedback as... If you saw that video and you carried on scrolling past it and it didn't interest you, what was it exactly about it that kind of put you off? Was it because the thumbnail was a little bit different than normal? There was there was no bike in it. Obviously, there was just uh, us us five boys lined up on the screen, so maybe it didn't really show what it entailed at all. Uh, was the title not so exciting? Just a anything in general that you think kind of put you off, or was it the type of content? Do you prefer me riding around testing out new tracks by myself, or do you like like me riding with the boys? Um, I mean, I'm open to suggestions because I like seeing the the channel improve and the content on the channel improve over time. Uh, so yeah, when I do spend a, a large number of hours uh, editing a video just for it to uh, absolutely tank, not a great feeling. So looking for some feedback on that, uh, please and thank you. I would really really appreciate it. Uh, one thing that Charlie mentioned as to why it might not be doing well is the length of it. But I, in my head, that didn't make too much sense to me because I thought, regardless of the length of a video, if I'm scrolling through YouTube, if the subject's interesting, I'll click on it and then I'll just stop watching after a certain amount of time when I get bored. Uh, but that, that could be a factor as well, is maybe it was too long and people were like, oh, I'm not going to sit down and watch all this, uh, which kind of might stop them from even watching 10 minutes of it. So, anyway, let's go, let's go back to this. I think, uh, so, so far, so good. I, I definitely crashed more times than I would like to. Can we hit this triple? Oh, yeah, barely got over it. Uh, and it seems, so far, I think unintentionally, it's just wherever my bike takes me, is uh, that I've been taking a different line on most laps. So, we've got some good line variation here. Please don't crash hooking left to right. Thank you. Around to the right. It's actually a very fast-paced track. And I think it would take me a little while to get used to which jumps are which, because a lot of them are like quite blind. Oh my Christ, so am I. I'm blind, can't even see the corner coming up. Yeah, a lot of the jumps are blind, so you can't really see what's coming at you until you've already taken off. So it does require a few laps to get a little bit of a flow going, to know how fast you need to hit all of the jumps. Try going around the outside here as well. I reckon you could probably triple that there. I like that it's not just a completely flat track. Um, I think... I think some people get worried about adding too much rough, the, the community might hate it. But this is that amount of rough where it's not brutal, you know, your, your bike's not going to suddenly wash away from you. I mean, maybe if you're trying to go a million miles an hour, that could be the case. Every lap I've got that jump completely wrong there, I'm so sorry. Um, but it's a good little, little bit of practice, you know, it makes you check up a tiny bit. But if you've got your line right and your apex in the corner correctly, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't destroy you, which is always lovely. And let's hook around in this rut here. I think for the most part, the ruts hold you pretty damn good. You carry a lot of corner speed. I like this middle one here that's kind of up and banked. You can kind of stand up there. If you ever have trouble with those sorts of corners, try doing them stood up rather than sat down. Probably seems a little bit counterintuitive to do, but I promise that your bike won't be uh, quite as funky. All right, let's triple. Oh, that's not even the triple. God damn it. Oh, that's fine. We should still be able to do it again. Send it. Oh, boing, land it, land it, land it, land it. And we're fine. Tip time. We're alive. Good stuff. That's what that's what I mean. I thought I jumped one too, one jump too early. Thought we'd hit the triple, but we was on a completely different jump. Thankfully, the, the landing of it was actually quite forgiving, so we did not meet our demise. I'm also wondering if I could, like, send this and land here. But, oh, I don't know. I think you'd have to be going at a hell of a lot of speed to get up and over that. These are just the sorts of things that when I'm flying around in the replay camera, just spectating the track before we hop on and play, my, my brain's kind of working overtime. It's like, well, can I jump this to here? Like, what's, what line's possible? I think that's just racer brain kicks in. As well, I'd love to be able to triple out of that corner. I feel like there's a possibility if you hit it in just the right place. But one thing that he's done quite well is there's kind of like high and low spots on the jump faces when you add ruts to them. Like if you kind of balance yourself on top of the ruts, you can... I'll say a lot lower because take off the jump isn't quite as sharp or if you get deep within the ruts it'll send you higher and it's there's lots of little things that you can do to improve your lap time around tracks like this and I believe there's 40 gates um 
But I mean, I haven't actually seen the start straight yet. It's, it's back there. But it's, yeah, it's, there's no reason why this track couldn't accommodate 40 riders. I think it would be quite a fun one to ride around on. And one that's actually not annoying to try and pass on. I've been having uh, issues recently with some tracks ending up getting a little bit one-lined. That is... I'm such an L gamer right now. I'm, I'm so sorry, Mouse. I'm not doing this any favours. Yeah, I've been getting some tracks recently where they're really fun to like ride and play by yourself. And, however, then when you go and chuck more than, say, five people on it, then it becomes a little bit of a pain to try and pass people. It ends up being a little bit of follow leader. I don't, I'm not sure if that's intentional there. If it is, this is like amazing, great attention to detail. And you see how it gets like slightly lower here? I'm not sure if this is meant to replicate where people are landing from the triple, or if it's just meant to be a slightly lower bit, as if people are taking off here to give you a little bit of a lower jump into the corner. Either way, I, I really do enjoy it. I think... I remember way back when uh, I'd done a video on the track Razzlevania, which is, it's, that's, that's been out for quite some time now, it's got to be over a year at this point, and it was one of the uh, first tracks that really tried adding ruts to the landings of jumps, not just the takeoffs, uh, so you had to kind of be quite precise on where you'd land, and sometimes if you was one foot to the left or to the right, it would like, kind of mess you up if you hit a high spot or a low spot on the landing, and I like that, I like the extra technicality. And I, I don't think it's one of them things that deters beginner slash intermediate players away. I think it can only help. I don't think it's meant to hinder at all by any means. Uh, I, I I have no idea what sort of lap times we're running here. I have no idea how many laps I've done because, you know, Max Hud being gone completely. Uh, but I think that's a good showcase of the motocross track. As I just saw a bunch of tear-offs on the ground as well. Like, actually love the addition of that. I wonder if that's... I mean, I would go have a look at that, actually. I wonder if that's a model that gets placed in Blender, or if that's like a, a decal extra overlay. It's like right here on the floor in front of me. I think it, that might just be like a small little 2D plane that's overlaid with an image, because it looks like it's floating ever so slightly. But either way, really, really... Like, just I, I like picking up on little things like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a plane. It's definitely an object. You can see this one slightly glitching in through the ground. Uh, but there, there we go. There's the Nationals track. I'm going to hop on a pit bike now. And we're going to have a little bit of fun around the kids track and see how that goes. Right, so it's not the pit bikes as such, but it is the modded uh, CRF 110 uh, made by OTTM. So let's see how this goes. I actually really like the way this bike handles and feels overall. I'm, one, I'm worried it might be a little bit too fast for this track, but... I mean, at the end of the day, the bike's only as fast as you uh, press the right trigger down, isn't it? So let's uh, let's see how this goes and how this track rides. I'm not expecting much of it. It's like, I think it's, again, it's just meant to be like a really worn down kids track. And that's in uh, Mouse's opinion, not mine. So we'll see if it does a good job of that. I've, I've not got any erode on at the moment, so we're not really going to see anything develop in these flat corners. But I imagine if you wanted to have uh, a rip around with some friends on these bikes... You could probably get some decent ruts going if you slap on maybe, I don't know, like point, point 0.5 and they just really slowly build up. What is... The, oh, okay, that's a bit far. Land it. Ah, oh, lovely. The ex exactly, this is why I like this bike. You can get away with overjumping things and it, it does survive most of the time. That was a little double-double. I feel like I can really like crank the bike over quite far, like lean super far over in these corners. It might just be the perspective of how it looks, because the handlebars on this are quite big, uh, but then you're also quite low down to the ground. Uh, slam on the brakes, get on this tight inside rut. See, look, no, no front end tucking at all. It's lovely stuff. Oh, I wish I could have this much faith in the uh, the OEM bikes currently. I've been having a hard time on them. I think I've kind of been doing myself a little bit dirty. So as you, as you guys know, massive uh, enduro fan. Personally, I've been riding the enduro bikes a lot for the uh, the course, say the course, for the like competitions, the Ace Moto are holding at the moment on the uh, the Resolute courses, um, and I think it's kind of hindering me because them bikes, I feel like they're a bit more solid and stable than the current OEMs. So when I spend like a couple of hours practicing enduro tracks on those enduro bikes, I get used to how they feel, and how they handle, and then when I hop back onto the normal bikes for like normal aerial race days. I feel so loose and out of control, so that's 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 kind of on me, you know. Uh, I think Aiden mentioned the other day that it's he actually doesn't like getting new updates anymore because he he finally gets used to like how to control the current bikes, and then they go and get changed again. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of true, but at the same time, I would still like the bikes to be overall like more stable than they are currently, just in terms of the front end more than anything. There was one moment on the French, well. 
round two of the WSC championship in, in France. And I was just like flopping around all over the finish line for a good like 10, 10 plus seconds. It was so infuriating. And I know a lot of it's still with the game, but then also I know a lot of it's still with the bikes as well. And uh, to be fair, a lot of it does also come with uh, when you're kind of in the heat at the moment and you're trying to get going again as fast as you possibly can, uh, you, you might just panic a little bit. So it's, it's hard to kind of slow yourself down and say to yourself, right, the bikes aren't able to do this. Let me just chill and very, very slowly get going. But either, either way, it was a very frustrating scenario. But if you're looking for uh, more of a fun bike that... You can just mess around on and can have a lot of confidence in that it won't give you any like weird and wonderful moments then definitely give this uh, crf a go I'll, I'll link it down in the description for you if you do want to and i i think this this track's kind of delivering what i expected you know it's it's nothing out of this world but i, I actually really like these this first half of the track where it's got like a big banked berm and a deep inside rut so you can try battling and messing around with your friends uh, this second half is not too bad but the corners don't really have anything to hold you in but like this corner here is just ridiculous like rah, all the way around the outside getting on the power and we bang it down the box brake nice and slowly get going again i'm actually quite i'm quite happy that we use this bike rather than the uh the normal pit bikes because if you try turning too tight on the pit bikes then they do give you some funky physics where the bike kind of i think you get too much grip on the front end and i triple this oh my god you i almost I think that might be quaddable. Hang on, let me turn around. I want to try quadding this. Alright, if I come out super wide. Ah, stretch it! Oh, no. Okay, maybe not. If you get a lucky bounce, possibly. If you get like another half a bike length, you should be able to survive that. But I think I hit that corner pretty damn well. And that was, uh, yeah, that was a bit of a, a no from me. But yeah, 100%. I'd say give, give these bikes a go. I, I feel like they're... The new pit bike, if that makes sense. I know it's not a pit bike by by design. Um, I definitely think that it goes a lot faster than a 110 ever should. But that's what makes it fun. In day, I like I like it being given some some fun bikes. And then speaking of the enduro bikes, we now get to put them to the test. So I'm not sure how difficult of an enduro track this is meant to be. Is since it's called a trail, I'm guessing it's actually going to be really easy and straightforward. So we're going to see how this goes. There uh, from my little flight. Well, <laughs> ah, from my little flyover at the beginning, it looked quite straightforward, although I wasn't able to look deep into the trees. Already straight off the bat, love the fact that we've got some split line selection. That should be nice and fun. So, oh, we've got some rough stuff as well, so it's not just like nice flat marked out areas. Put some time and effort into it. I'm going to slow down here because I do not know how quickly this corner is going to come up on me. Lovely, got another split section. Looks like we've got some, some deep ruts going on as well. Another little split here around the trees. Go around to the right. I'm guessing this is a rut and not meant to be like the edge of the track. I mean, this oh, that looks... I mean, this is actually really well designed. Like, this is a really like pretty looking area. I like that. Massive shout out. Ws. Love when people actually put a little bit of time and effort into some enduro stuff too. I'm not 100... I'm not 100% sure if I just hit a bump or if it was the actual water there, but... I know on some tracks people make the water have like a very soft collision, so it slows you down, which adds to that level of realism. We'll try, if I find another little water area, we'll, we'll ride into it and see if it slows me down at all. God. Of course, hitting trees is never the most ideal of situations. I like that it, like there's parts of this through the trees that are not so like openly marked, but it kind of leaves it up to you to find the fastest line if that makes sense so you can kind of go one side of the tree or the other uh, kind of like slow up cut down etc like here we get to try and find our way through all of these trees going up to the left and again just kind of feel all your way through try and make a straight line uh again he's got some wrong way signs so if you're like me and you you have a tendency to get lost like that it goes through the middle of the motocross track that's pretty cool and then oh god okay note self we do not hit need to hit that anywhere near as fast as i just did no idea how long this is overall. I don't think it's meant to be the longest trail track in the world. Just something extra that he's decided to, to throw in. And I encourage any of you uh, track creators out there, if you're building a track, um, even if it's your first one and you've got a little bit of spare space around the edges, then, then why not? Why not add a little trail in there? More more people would enjoy it than you think. I promise it's worth the, uh, the time and effort. Oh, God. I Even though I crashed there, 
I like what he's gone for. So it looks like if you was to go on the left side as you come down, it's actually more difficult, but would be faster if you get it right. Or then you can go to the right hand side and have an easier route, which is slower. But that's a W. I like the little line choice there and options. Kind of gives people of all skill levels a bit of a like a challenge overall. Get up here. I think for a trail that's not actually meant to be difficult, I've I feel like I've crashed a lot of times. That could just be from me being a bit of an L at the moment and not knowing uh, what's coming up. Again, because I'm so dependent on the max HUD usually and looking at the uh, the track map. Uh, oh, that is a lap. Okay, we've literally okay, we've done a lap already. This is turning right to then go down to the finish. The traction on this bit is actually really slippery, which I do like different traction types as a whole. Uh, so there you go. There's a little uh, little view of the trail. I'm not going to do loads of laps of the trail because I imagine it probably gets a little bit boring for people to watch. And then alternatively. For you uh, free ride guys, we've got a little bit of a free ride area over here. Well, it looks like he might have. I'm not sure how much testing he done on these ramps because I done a similar thing where I just uh, added a bunch of ramps to my track that I made without riding them and didn't realise just how high and far these ramps actually boot you. So these jumps a little bit on the small side, but maybe you can get some backflips going. I don't know what else you can really do trick wise on these. Can I get a backflip right here? Mm, no, I'm going to end myself. Okay, so overall. For a first release, like, really, really impressive. And I know that Mouse has had some, like, difficulties in this whole process. So uh, it had a lot of, like, like race data issues, if you're not sure what that is. That's, like, timing. So your lap times counting and getting cuts when you shouldn't be getting cuts, etc. Um, so I'm glad he finally got everything sorted and managed to get a full release for us. Definitely looking for some more in the future. Because for a first release, this probably, this beats, like, 95% of first tracks. And... I do not say that lightly. I'm a hard man to please. So W from Mouse, uh, W from you guys for watching too. If you did enjoy, please do drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'd greatly appreciate it. Have a lovely rest of the day, whatever you're up to, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.